In this lecture, we continue with Books 17 and 18 of the Iliad by Homer. Book 17 begins with one of the most monumental aspects of the entire epic work, and that is the death of Patroclus. It is a turning point in the book, and um, it can also be viewed as the climax, because everything in the book has been leading up to, if you remember, uh, what the first line of the book states, the satisfying basically the wrath of Achilles, and that is going to come into play with the death of Patroclus. When this happens, Menelaus tries to keep the Trojans from taking the armor. Remember, Patroclus went out and was wearing Achilles' armor as a way to rouse the uh, morale of the troops and to try to give them more confidence. If they felt like Achilles or thought that Achilles was fighting with them, they would have more confidence and could fight harder. However, it was only Patroclus. When Patroclus has been killed by Hector, um, both sides began to fight over the body, and this is going to be something we'll discuss uh, momentarily about the importance of burial. But as both sides are fighting, Apollo aids the Trojans, and Athena then aids the Greeks. And this is a, a way for to stop for a moment and see how in the midst of the tragedy among the humans, it all boils down to a mere game on behalf of the immortals because they are now taking sides. One side wants the Trojans to win, one side wants the Greeks to win, and so it's not necessarily about what is better for the mortals, but who can win on behalf of the immortals. And many critics have said um, and described it as the mortals are merely pawns in this giant game that the immortals are playing. And this is a very um, appropriate case in point example of that um, occurring. Another aspect that occurs in Book 17 is um, Achilles' horses begin to weep for the death of Pat over the death of Patroclus, and this is not something we have seen um, in great detail before. But it is a personification of feelings that it, the death was felt so inwardly and so deeply that even the horses realized it, um, and the horses also talked to Achilles as well. So remember that is an example of. Um, personification. And then by the end, the Achaeans eventually win the body and the fighting is going to continue on. Uh, with this, something, another um, feature to really zone in on for book 17 is the treatment of a fallen hero. And all of the heroes um, are basically uh, every warrior is viewed as a, a hero, so to speak, but then you have some that are a little more important than others. And if that happens, there is a greater importance placed on their burial. If you remember in the past books that there were times in um, sticking to that code of honor, both sides would call for a truce. Both sides would then call for a truce and the burial of all of the soldiers would take place. And this was important because in order for a body to move over um, into the next aspect of the underworld, they would have to have a proper burial. If they did not, they would be condemned to wander aimlessly in the what is the purgatory-esque state of the underworld. And they would not have the uh, payment for the boatman so that they could cross the river and either go into Tartarus or to the Elysian fields. Um, the bravest warriors would receive the highest honors and special treatment. Um, and because Patroclus was viewed as one of the highest warriors, this uh, restates the fact that he is linked to Achilles, and Achilles would be considered a great hero to fall. And so Patroclus is the same. And if you remember, though, back when it's a theme that we have discussed. Um, time and time again, the way to satisfy Achilles' wrath um, is to avenge Patroclus' death, but, uh, or, it, and to satisfy his anger would be to have him be realized as a very glorious warrior, and this could not happen until the Greeks actually fell flat on their face, and in order for that to happen, um, they would have to ad basically admit defeat among themselves and would do nothing but be able to beg and call Achilles back in to fight. So even though Patroclus has died, it was a way to reel Achilles back into the fighting.
And as we have mentioned earlier, this aspect of personification, and this is seen through the horses of Achilles. They both um, experience grief and sadness. Um, and then Patroclus's death ultimately leads to Hector's. By Hector killing Patroclus, he has basically sealed his own fate. As book 18 opens, um, Achilles has been given a choice by his mother, and we'll talk more about that briefly momentarily. The fighting is going to continue, and then Polydamas warns Hector of the continued fighting. He says, let's not stay out here in the open. Let's go back into the inside the walls of Troy, where it is more fortified, and we have a better chance of winning. However, Hector disregards that, um, and, and in the throes of fighting and in the midst of his fear of the impending fate that in I believe in his heart of hearts he knows that his days are now numbered because he has inadvertently killed Patroclus. Uh, but Achilles and the Greeks while they are fighting, they continue the mourning of Patroclus. And Achilles has sworn that no one uh, will bury uh, Patroclus until um, the armor and the head of Hector are captured. So this is basically an ultimatum that Achilles has stepped forth or set forth in order to avenge Patroclus's death. Um, at the end of book 18, Thetis has commissioned a new set of armor for Achilles. She goes to Mount Olympus and talks with Hephaestus, who is the husband of Aphrodite, who, and he is the blacksmith and commissions a new set of armor for her son. Now, talking about that choice that Achilles has been given, um, he chooses to avenge Patroclus' death. However, in doing so, his mother reminds him, you have one of two choices for how you are going to live this life. If you kill Hector, it is inevitable that your death will soon follow. You will die young and gloriously, but your name will be remembered forever. However, if you do not kill Hector, you will return home and you will live a long life, but your fame will not last. And so in this aspect, uh, Achilles makes the choice and chooses to go ahead and have his name be remembered um, and, and basically immortalize him. Um, but this is something to remember. He does have a change of heart um, and of his mindset when Odysseus later encounters him in the underworld. So keep that in mind as well. Um, Hector in this uh, book so far, remember that he represents the responsibility and a sense of duty. He is not going to um, adhere to or follow Polydamas' advice and go behind the walls of Troy and fight. It's basically, I've made this bed, I am now going to lie in it, and that's exactly what he does. He is going to fight wholeheartedly, even if it means losing his own life. Polydamas here is the voice of reason because he is trying to instruct um, and give Hector suggestions on how to not only win this war, but how to come out alive. And then Achilles, there is this one example of where he has fire coming out of the top of his head. And there's a lot of imagery in that. But the biggest thing is the fire that is seen that does foreshadow the ultimate and inevitable fall of Troy.